Welcome to SGS Talks, a series of 15-minute technical talks that provide you with the latest industry insights, news, and technology to support you and your projects. I'm Julia Roth, the Portfolio Lead for our Air Services Group. This month, I'm excited to introduce Tom Barzak, Portfolio Lead for our Built Environment Services, to talk to you about COVID-19. Thanks, Julia. Hi, everyone. My name is Tom Barzak, and I'm the subject matter expert for Building Sciences and Healthy Buildings. Today, we're going to talk about COVID-19 services and how they impact you and the client. This presentation is going to be discussing COVID-19 and the different services analysis that we offer at SGS, and more importantly, how we help our clients through this time. The agenda for this presentation, we're going to talk about safe traces, a quick review from last month's uh, webinar. We're going to talk about the current COVID climate, routes of transmission, and this is where everything gets started, is we want to make sure the routes of transmission are addressed. We'll dive into some of our laboratory analysis, other related services that address COVID, and we'll take some questions as well. First, a very short review. As we learned last month, Safe Traces and the Veridart study assesses aerosolized particles and the movement within buildings. These mimic the exact same spread of the COVID or other viruses in the air. Where are they concentrated? How do they move? How do they get filtered? And the various tests that they offer help analyze this. One word I did um, want to highlight is verify. Today in the marketplace, everybody's looking for the science, the data behind um, COVID, our practices, and how it impacts them. So it's very important to collect that scientific data, which Safe Traces does very effectively. And how they use this, clients use this to help with decisions regarding ventilation, their filtration, and airborne interventions. Again, good science that can have good proactive steps for them. Um, as I previously mentioned, there's three different types, survey test, dilution, and filtration. Uh, I'd like you to focus on the upper left, the heat map diagram, as we're going to come back to that when we talk about air sampling. But again, this is just a short overview of safe traces in the very dark study. Now, I share this screen. I'm sure all of us can relate with the, uh, the stress, the, the COVID chaos that we have right now. As you see the different words, this is where everybody's experiencing, our clients, ourselves, and we can all relate to this. There's a lot out there, a lot of information, and we need to help our clients sort through this and what's a practical, common sense approach. And that leads us into routes of transmission. We must always focus on these three in order to build an effective plan, an effective program for us and for our clients. So the first is person to person. Now we know that the transmission from person to person aerosolized will impact each other. The aerosolization, not just breathing, but now what's in the air, in the uh, indoor environment, in the building, where does that go? Where does that move? And then as these particles, these infectious particles settle, it's called fomite. So we must address the settling of these infectious particles too. Again, person to person, aerosolization, and fomite. Our strategy must be geared towards these top three. And that leads us right into the laboratory analysis that at SGS we, um, we, that we utilize. Uh, PCR technology. It's basically the molecular photocopying of DNA strands and so that we can properly identify. I did find it was very interesting that this is the most important scientific advancement in molecular biology. And we're pleased to say at SGS, we've got the technology and we utilize it daily uh, to assist our clients. And again, it seeks this RNA that identifies the specific virus. That's the big change of how we identify the absence or presence of the specific virus. Now we offer three different sampling types at the moment, uh, swab sampling, air sampling, and wastewater. Swab sampling is the sampling of the surface of the fomites, the settled of these infectious particles. Are they present or are they absent? Well, air sampling collects the, the aerosolized portion to determine is the virus airborne in the space that we're sampling. And wastewater, as we enter our buildings and interact, we do shed the virus. And so the virus is in our wastewater and this can be very uh, helpful in a proactive approach. Now I want to talk to how our clients are using these services in different laboratory analysis. So swab sampling, as you've all heard with cleaning and disinfection, uh, we want to validate that's appropriate. We're sampling these high touch point surfaces, the areas that we touch, door handles, push buttons on elevators. Um, are these surfaces contain the virus? Is our cleaning effective? Those two go very hand in hand. We've also seen a lot of proactive screening. 
So as we're, people are, are infected, we're getting positive results. We want to determine how have they infected the building, the property, the location, the office, if you will. And then outbreak testing, the very response to, hey, we've had some concerns, some positive cases. Um, how has it impacted the office or the area that we're sampling? Uh, it's very highly used for that. Um, air sampling, focus screening. And I'll stop here as we go back to the safe trace, that heat map. As you saw those red areas, those are concentrated areas that we may want to select air sampling for to monitor and measure these locations. Most of these are highly occupied as well as their high concentrations. So those two as well go hand in hand. Uh, then the other thing we've seen a lot of um, use for air sampling is in outbreaks. Uh, we've noticed uh, we've seen a lot of breaks or outbreaks spread in break rooms. As we're in there, we're eating, having mask off, we're seeing that the uh, virus is being spread. So we might select air sampling for specific locations because of how we use that space. And lastly, wastewater. Very proactive screening of a building, of an area, very focused on the outbreak indicator that we can react and respond to. Now we know we have a concern, how can we help or improve the environment or make some corrective actions? Also, um, evaluating building, water systems. Um, this is, could be part of a ongoing study in combination. And we are seeing a lot of cities and municipalities use this sampling. So these are the three current ones they work together a lot of clients have selected to do swab sampling air sampling and are now starting to wastewater so they're not independent but they can be used together in a very effective proactive plan in addition to our laboratory analysis we have other related services to help address covid and help our clients as they address covid in their buildings in their spaces as of late indoor air quality has received a lot of attention as it should we want to verify that the ideal indoor air quality is present and we wanna test and verify and monitor these conditions. Ventilation and filtration are also key. Are our mechanical systems moving um, air properly? Do we have the proper filtration in place? Do we have the proper air exchanges? We want to make sure and monitor these. Cleaning and disinfection, we've all heard about it, but it is still critical. Are we cleaning and are we disinfecting appropriately with the appropriate chemicals, the appropriate frequency, and are we hitting the high touch point surfaces? Social behavior and distancing. As we know this is spread from person to person, our social behavior has to change. Our distancing has to change. We wanna help develop that program, that plan, so that everybody understands the expectations. Water quality and testing are another key area. As our buildings are vacant and very low occupancy, we don't have the water exchanges that we normally do, that the buildings are designed for. So therefore we wanna ensure that we don't have concerns like Legionella and other water quality issues are not present especially before we reoccupy spaces. And as mentioned, Veridar is a great useful tool uh, in conjunction with all these services. And last, this leads us to an infectious prevention program. At the end of the day, we want our clients and our teams to have an infectious prevention program that can address not just COVID now, but a long-term plan and a long-term success. And all this leads to a healthy building and healthy reoccupancy. So I appreciate attending this webinar. Here's some contact information for me. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And thank you again for attending and stay tuned for our next webinar.